you know this year we are focusing on we are focusing on lessons from Latin America on education, innovation, and research in bamboo. Last week uh, we talked a little bit about the bamboo foundations, uh, the research and the practice uh, of bamboo in architecture specifically. And uh, in this session, session two, we will uh, talk a little bit more about the educational approaches for bamboo in Latin America. For that, we will have uh, four speakers who will uh, give us an overview of their experiences on the, on the area of education, uh, specifically related to bamboo and their projects, uh, educational projects uh, in the region. And that will, sell us, uh, uh, that will, that will give us uh, an overview of how we, how we can approach um, the education, the education processes, and also what is needed to integrate bamboo into uh, architect uh, architectural um, courses and studies, uh, not only in the region, but also it can be replicated elsewhere. So uh, for that, I will uh, introduce our uh, four, sp uh, four speakers uh, today. Well, let me introduce a little bit the, the session first. So today we, we will talk uh, about the, well, this uh, session this year, we are talking about the four key pillars, education, innovation, and, and research in bamboo construction. And that will help us to foster a global conversation uh, that uh, is very important for us uh, in all these uh, different sessions that we have programmed. The last week was on research and the, the next Today is education. The next one will be on the innovations in the construction sector. So the four speakers today are, uh, we have uh, Mr. Jan Varnet. He is the, the director of uh, the director of the Institute of Housing, Urban Planning and Architecture of the San Martin de Porres University located in Peru. And he will talk a little bit about uh, his experiences on uh, learning by doing, no, a little bit uh, very pragmatic uh, from uh, the academic, from the academic perspective to the community, no, uh, what he has been doing, uh, working to implement the academic research uh, together with the community on the ground, no, to land it a little bit. We will also have uh, uh, Miss Julia Celenteno. Uh, who is uh, who will talk a little bit more uh, from a humanitarian focal uh, point of view uh, of uh, her perspective uh, on the humanitarian work with bamboo and in architecture and we will have also a joint experience from two uh, architectural uh, students from the University of Panama who will also provide us a different perspective from the academic research within the institution, within the different workshops, and so on, that I will introduce later. Uh, first of all, uh, we will begin with uh, architect Jan Barnett. Let me introduce him a little bit. He, uh, he, is, uh, he studied in Montpellier, in Seville, and in Strasbourg, and uh, he uh, did research in architecture, in urban planning, and uh, in South Lima. Uh and he has also uh, worked in, in Bali, in Indonesia, Stockholm, and Shenzhen here in China. He has done research uh, at the Institute of Housing, Urbanism, and Construction in the university where he works now in uh, Peru. And he has academic activities and leads projects with social approaches and the development of construction technologies. In 2017, he assumed the direction of the Institute, promoting lines of research and sustainable, on sustainable construction techniques based on bamboo and leading the platform of the Bamboo Center of Peru. So within this framework, he has participated in the Committee for the Elaboration of the Bamboo Standard of the Peruvian Building Regulations and has designed several projects with bamboo structure, in particular in the area affected by the 2007 Pisco earthquake as well as other emblematic infrastructure. We, I would like to uh, introduce 
uh, Jarnet and let him uh, start with his presentation, learning by doing. Uh, Mr. Jan, uh, you have the floor. Hola, muy buenos días a todos. Bueno, sí. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Both. Good evening for some. Good early morning for those of us in Latin America. I will now try and share my screen. Please let me know if you can see it properly. Sí, se ve perfecto. Yes, we can see it clearly. All right. Muy bien, entonces, uh, empezando, ¿no? Con, uh, con este tema que para mí, verdad, es muy okay. interesante y muy importante. So let's start. This is something very, very interesting to me. I am very concerned about education, and it's the first time that we are able to speak about our work through this perspective, through these lenses. We often speak about architecture, or we speak about the properties of bamboo, or we speak about the research we've done. But most of our work starts from the academia. And as it was mentioned, I'm part of an institute that is part of a university, a private university in Peru, and whose objective is to become the bridge between the academia and the community. So this is done through academic activities, through training activities, and also through research projects. But this is not only research, this is research with action, because we want our research be related to specific action, the specific needs of the community, whoever they may be. And as part of this work, we have specialized specifically in bamboo building architecture. We have been working for about 15 years with this beautiful, wonderful and excellent material. And during this time, for this 15 years, we have been carrying out projects related to different kinds in different sizes and different colors and for different uses. But all these projects have something in common, which is beyond what you can see on screen. What we believe is that this project gives us the opportunity to continue exploring new details, new processes and new geometries new geometries provided by this material, but always with the same objective. We want to continue optimizing and diversifying the use of bamboo in architecture. Now, we're going to be talking about education and processes. We're going to be talking about training processes, about learning processes. So I thought it is important at this moment to talk about how it all started for us. There is a picture with another architect. We are the architects who have started this line of research at our institution. And it all started with a single course, with a single training course. And for us, this was the seed, the seed that enabled all the work that we've done to be carried out. And I think that the effectiveness of this course is the one that has created the path for a philosophy of teaching. So this is also an acknowledgement for these two fantastic professionals who are Luis Felipe Lopez, everyone knows him, he's Colombian, and Jorge Moran, may he rest in peace, who's an Ecuadorian or who used to be an Ecuadorian. And they were our mentors, they were the people who started teaching about architecture and the uses of bamboo. But let me tell you that the training that took place in Lima in 2008 was carried out along eight days and the organization was crucial because there we obtained information about the structural features and characteristics of bamboo as well other characteristics of this material. But also, on behalf of the architecture, we taught, we were taught everything that could be done with bamboo. We learned about its history, about its use in architecture, and we spent a whole afternoon building. And then we understood that the training team needed to be met of 
masters of Mr. Galas and Carrillo who were key for this training specifically, but also during all our professional experience in architecture. So for me, this has certainly made a lot of changes and this was a positive experience for me because we start with basically zero knowledge. We were trained in Europe, my colleague and me, and of course, bamboo is not a key material. We had never spoken about bamboo before in our training and during our curriculum in architecture. So we didn't have any knowledge about bamboo, but for six days, we stayed there and we decided to build a church with bamboo. So we were able to understand that if in the future we wanted to become the teachers, but also learn and build and innovate with bamboo, but not only sticking to the traditional methods and replicating them and replicating methods that were always similar, then we needed to have three specific pillars for our teaching. First of all, we need to understand that without any of these pillars, there's no possibility for us to continue building or to make the best of a single material. So first we need structural notions. We need to understand the material. We need to use it to its full potential. Then we need to continue with the practical experience, which is certainly crucial. We need to learn about the techniques and also labor. We need to understand how it works. Actually, at this very moment, we're carrying out a study which is only dedicated to the experience of experts. Experts who have been working with bamboo for a long time, uh, they have been working with this material for a long time, but there's also a lot of innovation in the process. But then the final process that we need to learn about the new research and this final decade has been very enriching for us, for us working in bamboo architecture, because we've had the chance to learn about the details, about the construction details, things that we've attempted to do. And of course, we're not reinventing the wheel and we are taking advantage of what has been discovered before by all the professionals around the world. But there's something that we believe is intangible, but also crucial. Great part of the learning with bamboo is actually building with bamboo. Even though the first workshop that I spoke about was only half practice. We've continued learning, but we've learned by doing. So we haven't been paying attention to a book specifically, but we've been working hands on. And this has been crucial because we have been able to understand what the work is, what a carpenter that works with bank boo has to do, and also the ways in which we can improve and make better these processes. And this is the second philosophy that we've always tried to implement in our architecture in general, but also in our learning processes. So for us, a good project with bamboo means that it's easy to construct. As you know, there is a history of engineering and it could be very pleasing to have the possibility of using this material because you can build big things with very little resources that don't need a lot of people and that don't need a lot of equipment. You just need a drill, you just need a saw, and then you're able to create wonders. However, for this, the design needed to be interrupted because we can also design things that are extremely complex for their construction. But we have always decided to look for things that are easier because making things easier allows us to create happy and efficient work. And for us, this has been the main ingredient, one of two main ingredients to be able to make the best out of these processes after learning. So, the learning process should always be focused on something real. We're going to build something that will have a use. It should not only be for an academic purpose. It should not only be used as an academic exercise. Because if we only 
do exercises, then we are not thinking about the difficulty of finishing a full project and being able to provide answers to a process in whole. So if we create something concrete, then we are forced to find solutions which are not only educational, but that are also helpful from an architectural perspective. And it should be something easy, something simple for people. And this, it should only be difficult for the designer because this is where you innovate. You look for new technologies, you look for geometries and for an order of the processes, which will enable you to carry out this process and learn and making also learning easy. And those who see this process as something easy, if you don't suffer it, but you enjoy it, will become, this person will become a new ambassador for Bamboo because they're going to be able to see all the properties or the good things that this material provides. And we can realize that it is thought in the best possible way. So the first learning experience that we had, it was actually training experience in Peru. So as you can see on the slideshow, this has been a fantastic learning experience for us. So what we did was build housing structures, housing modules. This is not temporary housing. This is a full blown house for the post earthquake reconstruction in Peru in 2017. So in this case, the contact that we are facing is very difficult. It is very difficult and the objective was very clear to provide the best modules for the amount of money and time that we had. So as we realized and when we did our training, we figured out that there was a lot of work being done. We were making a special cuts on this material and we realized that we didn't have the capacity of achieving our objectives with people who had never used bamboo as a construction material before and we believed that this was a crucial foundation so we needed to find a way to create a module that didn't have any special cuts and that could be built in a training module that only lasted for a week so in just two days, we were able to pre-manufacture this because this is one of the main strengths of bamboo versus other materials. We can manipulate rather big structure. We can easily transfer them. They're very lightweight. And we are also able to put everything in a single track after it's been pre-manufactured, prefabricated, and assemble it in a single week. And a person was able to see the full building process of bamboo, starting with the selection of it, pre-manufacturing, assembly, and lining in a single block. So this has been one of the first experiences that we've used and it has been a great experience because we were able to create over 50 of these modules many many groups have been trained and they've been trained in this process so after that in order to broaden the training for the personnel we also started providing other kinds of training that were a little bit more advanced and we added new components that I mentioned before. And this was related to actually being able to understand what are the characteristics of bamboo, there were some areas related to the theory that provided knowledge about architecture, provided examples and showed different systems. But of course, practice was always present. We, of course, need to learn how to make this special cut and there's nothing better than practice to continue improving. And then we spoke about the raw material, we spoke about the structures, so we broadened the spectrum, but we were always exploring new building systems or new methods for using bamboo. In this case, we have a mixture of different kinds of bamboo. This one had holes. And here you can see the 
frame that was actually made out of bamboo. And we were attending this as trainers, and we were trying to implement training elements that were a little bit more complicated. And we were able to teach people in this area, and we taught them how to build two stories, which of course was the following step. So you can see this house that has provided support to different groups. At least three training groups have used this house. And through this, we wanted to have a catalog of options of different panels, different shapes, different ways of building roofs, different ways of creating floors. So as I said before, creating a project provides us an opportunity to build something new. So this is a research done by a Peruvian person and we used bamboo cut and we also used concrete and we used polystyrene. So through this, we have been able to widen our knowledge and to continue with our experience. This project is meant for education, as I said before. So through this, we were able to record and systematize the first experiences that we had. Of course, they were after the earthquake and they were related to very short-term interventions. And when things got easier, we were able to participate with the creation of the standard in 2012. But we also realized that this standard needed to be supported by, by more documentation that could be more illustrative and clear because the standard was meant for structural engineers and civil engineers, but builders need formulas and need bibliography. They need pictures. So we created an adaptation of a handbook that was published by architect Moran in Ecuador. And we used this for the process of building this house. And we tried to illustrate this manual with the process of building a house. This was published in 2013, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not 100% certain. But this is part of our academic work. We tried to create a systematization and we want these documents to be mainstreamed. In addition, for us, it was very, very important to take this experience to our place of a study. So because of this, we have created workshops in our school, in our university, and through this, we have been able to bring different audiences. We brought engineering of architecture and others, and we've always shown workshops that don't have a single target audience because we we realized that these workshops become more useful when the experiences are more broad and the participants become the engines for learning. And bamboo is such a versatile material that it can be used in so many different ways. So if you have a structural architect together with a builder, you can create more power for this material. So for us, this is something that we've seen in, in practice. So this, instead of being constrained, was something that made our knowledge better. And it also leads to challenges because workshops are not only to teach, but it also helps us create networks. Of course, these interventions don't always have to be connected to structures. This is the training session that we had with Engineer Lopez. So now I will try to quickly show you some examples of the workshops that we've held. And I'd like to show you how each workshop helps us to find solutions. One of the things that we have been able to realize is that having trainings with big groups shows that we cannot work on heights 
safety is a major concern in construction, so we can never jeopardize our participants. We cannot ask for things that are too demanding. So one of the main solutions is working with this project backwards. So we put the ceilings on the floor so there are no possible accidents. And then we turn this around just for the assembly. So in very little time, we're able to build ambitious and big structures, but also being able to create structures that can be seen complex at a first glimpse. For example, this can be applied for people who've never worked with bamboo before. So when you see this construction, you say, wow, it has a very high geometric complexity. But actually, we're able to use prefabricated material and we can do this on the floor. And those who are hard to build can be made with some joints and three dimensional bindings that allow us to build this without having to be experts who can build different techniques that are very difficult for a common person. So I will go briefly through these pictures because I don't have a lot of time, but I want you to feel how these workshops work. And I also want to show you the satisfaction of people because people are able to build this in record time. This is a three-day workshop where at least one day is theoretical training. In addition to this, as we've mentioned before, models are a very important tool for students. This is applicable for engineering students and also for architecture students, and also for our communication with the builders. And it's one of the best experiences that we've had because we're able to bring together teams of architects, civil engineers together in a single room and for a single project. So this project was meant for education this was carried out in the north part of the country, and we created groups of four people, two engineers and two architects. And I think that this has been a fantastic idea, where both set of professionals, both set of students in this case, have been able to make the best of what Bamboo can offer, but also of learning the need of using this material for construction. Something that is also very important is introducing bamboo in the curriculum of the architecture school of our university. So we are in charge of the building course through the platform. And we do this so that students are able to touch the material and also beyond teaching classes, we also ask them to build and we help them do this kind of construction. This was done in a two-day workshop. And through this, students can feel and understand how to work with bamboo, how to connect with bamboo, and how to design with bamboo. In addition, we are always trying to connect the activities of our students with NGOs, with social work, in order to avoid wasting our products, but actually making them useful for our community or for them to be applicable to any other need that we may find. And let me tell you in addition that whenever we assemble or create a training project related to Bamboo, we always need to think that we need to learn in the process. And that's the reason why we never repeat the process. We need to put together an effort as trainers and we need to urge people to do something new because these processes allow you to make mistakes. If you make a mistake, it's all right. This is the time to explore and to help us learn during our path. So. We've provided trainings in Lima, but we've also done so in communities. So our way of working varies. We try to adapt, but the logic is always the same. 
we have three main pillars, as I mentioned at the beginning, and we have been working with different species of bamboo. We've been in Costa Rica. We've even traveled to Cameroon for our training workshops. And you can see that this always provides opportunities for new geometries, new uses, new scales, new details. And to close up, I would like to show you one of the latest workshops that we perform just so you can understand a bit of the dynamics that we use in general. So as I said, a full workshop can be done in five days. So the first log is fully theoretical and then there's some work at the end of the first day. The second day we do drawings and processes for prefabrication and then we go to the assembly part of the process and in this case, we continued with the ceiling, with the roof, the finishing, and also closing the project. So all of this is done together with individual practice for creating unions. So we use a lot of pieces that are left, and we use this material for practice. And as I said before, it's learning while doing. This is the logic that we always use. So for these workshops, we always try to support the students and we try to develop manuals that are not only useful for this specific workshop, but also to replicate this in the future. That's why we have this manual, which was developed with INBAR. You can download it digitally. It's completely free. So this is the logic behind our training. It's theoretical, but immediately, we start with action. We start prefabricating. We follow drawings that allow us to work in parallel with different teams. And we can have groups of a lot of people at the same time. So as I said before, we also have the possibility of working in a network. And whenever there's an issue, when a joint is so difficult to manufacture, then we can use technology systems and we can use innovation in order to make this possible and to make the project ambitious. So in this case, we are creating a 90 meter construction and it was made with people who've never done this before. And we also use floor finishing work and we use torches and we protect this floor. And this can be done very, very quickly and very comfortably on the floor. So we always try to limit the working height as much as possible. And if it's not complex, we do it ourselves, but we always try to make this workshop safe. And just for you to have an idea, that's us, that's myself in this case as the main trainer, but I'm always supported by a secondary trainer and by a builder. Having builders is always necessary because they teach us. They teach us the technique and we teach them to them as well. And they help us understand the complexity and also specific things related to safety. But as you can see, because of this, we're able to build joints and modules. And in three days, we can create such a construction and then we can regulate, we can connect, we can do this very comfortably. We can use this pedestals and then we can build this finally. And we place the ceiling with a community, with different groups, with women, with the youth, with elder people, with builders, with architects. So there's always a mix of people. And of course, we always have the end of the project where people obtain a certificate on behalf of the university because of the learning attended. And this is crucial. This is something that has to be achieved. This is the builder who was with us in the project. So this is how calm a builder should look. This showcases that the workshop was successful. And for us, success is not measured in the infrastructure itself, but with people. And for us, it's something that we feel very honored about because we can see Jairo, Jorge, and Gustavo 
So a builder, an architect, an engineer. And today, they are already using this material. I know that I have very little time. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, we hear you well. We hear you well. So it's not only about teaching future professionals or specialists. Our job is also to educate other people. We know how important mainstreaming this material is and taking it away from its comfort zone in Latin America. There are some beach houses that are only used for tourism, but we need to bring it to new markets. And this is what we've done starting last year. We've participated in architecture first, and we've tried to take bamboo towards new scopes, new areas. So these are some pictures for the market. This is for social classes that have a lot of wealth. And we taught them that bamboo can be used in other places and it has a lot of added value. This is a fair that had the visit of over 3,000 people. So this is a big investment of time and energy for us. But I think that it's part of our mission to promote this material in these spaces in particular. And now to close up, it is very important for us to speak about awareness raising for new generations because new generations should be interested in bamboo. So this is a project that was born during the pandemic. This was a lot of field work, a lot of practice. And in Peru, well, we were not allowed to go out for two years my classes just became in-person classes in 2023, just imagine that. So we've tried to find ways to use technology because we realized that our children were learning via digital means. So we needed to create a learning tool in order to show the benefits of bamboo and do so through an educational video game through a game called Bamboo Race 3D. I'm gonna show you a bit of this. I'm gonna show you the trailer of this project. And in this case, we want to have children being able to race here. If you play this game, you learn without realizing. You're learning by playing, not by doing. And I think it's one of the best ways to learn about this. We're able to learn what it is, how it works. So learning by playing is very good. Jan, we're not able to hear you. The video is too loud. We couldn't hear you because of the video, but yeah, no, no worries. I just wanted to let you know that this project is currently available. We are trying to develop it for Play Store and iStore in order to make it available for uh, cell phones and tablets. And for us, the idea, 
the message that we want to send is that we need to be able to learn by playing and also learn by doing. And for us, we've learned that we can use any reason for training others so that we can also learn more and we can explore more. Thank you very much, Jan. We are a little bit behind schedule. I'm done. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. Thank you. Yes, this is my last slide. And this is our contact information. And there's also our web page so that you can get to know the work of our institution in detail. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jan. Thank you for your presentation. I will not go into details about his presentation. We can take questions later. Uh, David, would you rather take the questions now or at the end? I think that let's take the questions at the end. So in this way, we can respect the time of the rest of the speakers. All right, let us continue then. Let's continue with the next presentation. The next speaker is Julia Canentano. Julia is the humanitarian focal point and also the president of the ETH of Zurich. This is about sustainable construction. She is the head where she coordinates the research projects on site. She works with the Rath Cross also the United Nations Organization, well, the UNHCR, the Global Shirtle Cluster, which is also an agency that provides humanitarian services related to construction and other agencies that also work with humanitarian construction and sustainable development. She is an architect, she studied in the Polytechnic Institute of Milan, and she holds a master's degree related to settlements and emergencies from the University of Oxford Brooks. And today, she's going to talk about an online mass course for regenerative materials and construction. You have the floor. Can you hear me?
to the ETH MOOC in Regenerative Materials and Construction. This course will guide you through the concept of regenerative sustainability with a specific focus on materials and construction. We will look at their properties and uses as building materials while discussing their regenerative contribution to local, social, economic and natural systems. We will bring you out of the classroom. We will combine theory with site visits and interviews. Traveling across the Philippines, Austria, China, the Americas and more, you will hear from global experts along the construction supply chain. This five weeks long MOOC is accessible online, worldwide, self-paced and free of charge. We're excited to guide you through this journey into regenerative materials and construction. We are looking forward to having you on board and to join us into the development of a sustainable habitat. The course is uh, under development, so this was a, a draft. For example, we couldn't manage that to include the, the logos of, of our partners, so please let me do it in, uh, in one slide. We count on uh, great support, both from a content perspective and, of course, from a financial perspective. Um, our content partners are Amaco and Inbar. I'm going to tell you more about their collaboration in a few slides, and Innovedum from ETH Advancing Education and the Hilti Foundation kindly supported the, the development on the, of the course. Getting into more details, um, what is a MOOC? A MOOC is a massive open online course. It is a format that was developed some years ago to facilitate universities to reach a broader audience. In our case, the proposed duration of the work is uh, five weeks. The, we, the course is self-paced. Um, we have estimated around three hours of engagement of uh, the students uh, per week anytime they want to. Um, the course is accessible online, open access, globally, uh, free of charge, and for now in English. This is something we are discussing as we would like to, to reach an even broader audience, so uh, translations might be of interest. We will have translation in the text. Now we are seeing whether we make it also for the videos. Uh, why this MOOC? Well, as said, we want to maximize the outreach of our knowledge, uh, content, and capacity. We want to expand the audience beyond our Swiss boundary, strengthen local networks, uh, so potentially also triggering positive um, relationship of actors locally, disseminate existing knowledge. There is a lot already available out there uh, of incredibly high level. Uh, we don't mean we we don't we have no intention to um, reinvent the wheel. Uh, so we will, we want to facilitate also the dissemination of knowledge that is already out there and create a, a platform for it. And uh, it can also be a step to just have a, a lighter contact with, the, with these materials and, uh, and then a more, um, let's say, to be advised on where to look further in case somebody is interested to engage in a more detailed learning process. Um, our target group is, uh, of course, uh, the one that uh, sits in our classes, so engineers and, uh, and architects, but actually we want to, to reach a broader public, including builders, public officers, retailers, and as I mentioned earlier, to look more into the supply chain and the wall flow from resource extraction to uh, building use, end of life, and beyond. And for this reason, we set no prerequisites for accessibility. Even somebody who is just interested in the course, uh, um, can access it. Um, the course is not going to give any credit, although it is provided by a university. Um, and this allows us to have a bit of a flex flexibility on uh, who we can reach with it. Um, it started from uh, an idea of uh, Professor Guillaume Aber. You see him on the right in this photo. Uh, he, he noticed this, the great results of this CAS certificate in regenerative materials and was wondering how we could move a bit forward. I was uh, assigned as a program coordinator and project manager and uh, was uh, very lucky to have uh, Nuno helping on uh, most of the work. Um, as Nuno then left the group, uh, Asha Alaham stepped in. And uh, of course, um, it's a big project, so it is not only us. We have uh, 
the support of scientific assistance and technical assistance, and of course the media production lab um, to really consolidate the production of the content. While the, let's say the knowledge that we convey is from the World Research Group, uh, we are around 18 to, to 20 scientists and it really is what has been developed over the past, I would say 10 years. Regarding our partners, we partnered with the AMACO. Their strength is uh, really to be a pedagogical um, entity within the domain of earth-based construction and additionally also um, bio-based in some ways. For this course, we mostly uh, partner for the earth-based component. Uh, they provided us with the educational videos, illustrations, references and exercises. And let's say in a very mirroring way, um, INBAR has been a, a great support uh, uh, and maybe more, I would say more directly engaged. They gave their availability to uh, for a specific expert to join some interview moments, to compile text inputs for our students, uh, and of course to support networking, which is really one of the key agendas uh, uh, for the MOOC. And once again, to indicate what are the strategic references for further reading. We have a broad network of contributors and guests, not only academic, but also from the practice. These are distributed globally. We want to show that indeed knowledge is out there and it can also help to really foster these local networks. And we want to operationalize the learning. So not only leave it at, as a beyond the desk in Zurich, but really visit building sites and bring our students on the field also to diversify the perspective on the application of the knowledge. Uh, this knowledge exchange is really what has moved us and I think the course gives a great uh, panorama on uh, how knowledge can uh, uh, can circulate and can really foster positive development. We hope the MOOC will really contribute into this direction. It is organized around five modules, five thematic modules. The first being uh, regenerative sustainability in construction and materials, so from a more theoretical perspective, that what do we mean with uh, sustainable, what do we mean with environmental impact, also to unpack some words which are very much uh, contemporary and not necessarily fully understood uh, by a broader audience maybe. And we then dive into the material, starting with earth-based construction, moving into structural bio-based materials, timber and bamboo, non-structural bio-based materials, as for example, straw, hemp and others, and then material characterization and behavior. This is more the, the more technical uh, module of the five, uh, and it's really digging into the science of it. Uh, we use hybrid ped pedagogical tools, including videos, text, interviews, and exercises. This allows to have a dynamic teaching uh, format, um, and this dynamism is complemented by the fact that, uh, as mentioned, we invite lecturers, we diversify the offer, we physically move from one side to the other. We provide the teaching at a pretty light level. You will see it from a couple of extracts that I have in a few slides. Light doesn't mean approximated, but we really wanted to have um, no prerequisite for um, for the video, for the, for the MOOC. The idea is to raise the interest, to start guiding the audience through the, the milestones uh, to understand not only how to use those materials, but also what are the benefits and to use those materials. So what is really this impact that can be achieved? And then they can reach out to for the references if of relevance for them. We keep a, a strong visual component to the course. Uh, in fact, we as we want to reach a non-academic audience, we thought it was important to, to consider that part. And we mix theoretical and practical uh, inputs to really ground the science into the application. The course is being uh, now developed and uh, being slowly uploaded on IDX. IDX is a platform that is um, has been um, funded, uh, I think, around 10 years ago. It really facilitates uh, open access learning. It is globally available. It is interactive, easy to use. Uh, it is uh, well acknowledged and, uh, and smooth. Uh, so we hope this can help the dissemination phase. And as mentioned, we have a lot of, uh, we put a lot of energy into these video productions. Uh, videos include uh, interview videos with experts and uh, frontal uh, lectures, both from Zurich and from our guests and partners from all around the world. 
um, for this, the location of the videos will change. We move from a studio that we set up for the course to site visits on building sites and other offices. And uh, we also use video format because this helps to provide uh, guidance through exercises and simulations. Here you can see a little bit of what happened uh, in the process, uh, let's say, behind the, behind the scenes. You can. Welcome to the MOOC Regenerative Materials and Construction. Welcome back to our MOOC in Regenerative Materials and Construction. Well, when we talk about moisture in architecture, to water that interact with buildings. But now, now let's talk a little bit about implementation. No matter where we start, we come to a similar thinking process. So this means that we have a different demand depending on where we are. We're working closely with universities, always finding new ways of adapting earthen material. Thank you so much for having helped me with these final reflections on the topic. Thank you so much for the invitation. Thank you for having followed the module. Get ready now for the new one. Um, as you have seen, these videos were mostly around earthen construction because they are the ones that we produced in-house. For all the bamboo-related uh, components, we have really relied uh, for the practice uh, to the experts uh, on the field from the INBAR task force, and we are lucky to have uh, uh, one of them sitting uh, with us uh, in Zurich, Dr. Edwin Zayas Camilla, who uh, could provide direct impact, uh, direct, direct theoretical impacts from the, the, the MOOC studio. Uh, this knowledge was also complemented by text inputs and exercises, which we are currently working on. Uh, so to alternate these short videos of six to 10 minutes with uh, other learning uh, support. Um, the, we maintain the same structure, we treated somehow all materials in the same way. So no matter whether we talk about bamboo, earth, timber, we always go through the same components. These are introduction to the material, material overview, from resource to application, design and, um, and architecture, uh, system view and learning from case studies, and finally a synthesis section. Um, just want to ask, uh, as we were running a little bit late, can I still count on the full 30 minutes? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Okay. So um, just a little bit of details on the, on the section, starting from uh, the introduction to the video. We really took it from a conversational point of view. So why are we even talking about sustainability in construction? Where is the linkage? Why do we need to look beyond the materials and consider the whole system, the supply, the stakeholders? What does it mean to run a life cycle assessment? Uh, of course, these are uh, simplified in simplified terms for our audience. And we unpacked a few key uh, words uh, with a glossary section that can help to navigate through the rest of the course. Um, in each of the of the modules, we have uh, different uh, guests outside, of course, of our chair. We are always there. We will always provide a teaching, but then we relied on different expertise based on the module. For module one, we counted on internal expertise with the ETH with Professor Luther, reached out to Association La Nubian. We are now in discussion with UN Habitat. It's quite a, a roller coaster to have a final agreement with them, but I hope they will, uh, because they're interested, of course, in backing the project. I hope they will finally share their video input as well. And we are lucky to have uh, Hilti Foundation on board, not only for their financial support, but really for sharing their view on the use of, uh, of regenerative materials, and in their case, specifically uh, bamboo, for what they contribute on with the course. When we moved into the details of uh, earth and construction, Again, through the material and resource overview, technological applications, design and architecture, uh, supply chain, learning from case studies, uh, innovation and research and synthesis. We once again looked at our network of colleagues and partners around the world. We were lucky to have for this one uh, strong inputs from Amaco, Crater, Lemton Erde, uh, Professor Mujun, Terra Block, Lemag, BC Materials and Oxara. 
and this really shows the diversity of um, of global inputs that we can have on one topic and uh, the, the similar structure applies to module three where we navigate through bamboo and timber construction as structural materials and here really the the collaboration with the winning bar of course has been uh, has been key um, with uh, direct interventions from Luis Felipe Lopez, Sebastian Kaminski, as well as Professor David Trujillo. And we complemented their knowledge with uh, other conversations with the experts as Prof uh, Professor Domenico Zamuller, Francesco Pitau, and Michael Clifford. Uh, as mentioned, uh, I think we sit in a lucky position to have uh, Dr. Edwin Zes Camilla at ETH within our research group. Uh, not only because of the inputs that he could be, give, but really because of the overview that the task force provides and uh, the global uh, expertise that is really made available. Uh, we then moved into bio-based non-structural. So shrimp, hemp, and other fast-growing species used mostly for uh, insulation um, purposes. Once again, reaching out to Amaco and Politecnico di Milano, but also counting a lot on our internal expertise of the group outside the MOOC team with Dr. Evra, Posani, and Gosvain. And finally, for the, um, the module that really tests a little bit, the I would say the, the scientific uh, patience of our audience, uh, module five, we look into the material characterization and, uh, and behavior for all the materials that we assess. So earth, bio-based fiber, timber, bamboo, and we then unpack topics like uh, thermal comfort, health, and mix design. Again, uh, I'm happy to, to have received the positive uh, support from uh, our global partners. And uh, within our research group, we count on a very solid uh, uh, group of uh, researchers. It's what we call the lab team um, that really had to navigate through the more uh, science-based uh, details at the material level for the materials that, that were discussed. Just uh, I have a few minutes left. I will use them to present to you some extracts from the module three on timber and bamboo, specifically on bamboo, given the topic of the of the conversation. We are still in the post-production phase, so please be gentle if you see something is uh, um, is not yet polished. So we start from uh, an extra uh, from the input provided by Luis Felipe Lopez. In this case, I had asked him uh, if uh, it is possible to build multi-story bamboo houses. And um, as you can see, the level of the question is quite simple. It is what somebody that first approached the, the topic might want to know. And this is why the answer given is also not into the technical details, but is quite on a conversational level. So the answer is yes and no. So yes, because there is uh, experience uh, previous and especially in the coffee region in Colombia when we have vernacular houses built using bamboo with the technique of bareque up to five stories. However, all the new regulations around the world uh, building codes from Colombia, Peru, Ecuador, the ISO standard, uh, restrict the number of floors up to two. So why we cannot do more than two right now is because we need to prevent uh, the spread of fire, so we need to create barriers for the fire don't pass to one floor to another, but it's not a structural problem. So we'll to another example, in this case, we will be sitting at our MOOC uh, office uh, or MOOC studio in ETH, and in this case, uh, Dr. Edwin Zayas Camilla is uh, just an abstract uh, on context informed solutions from uh, his input lecture. Due to the global presence of bamboo, it has been used by many different cultures around the world since time immemorial. These have informed the different construction systems that have been developed in those regions and the type of the bamboo that we find will define the systems that were developed. All videos uh, will be complemented with uh, post in post-production with the images and slides to really support the conversation of the and the input of the lecturer. And some of the videos, as mentioned, are set in an interview format, as you can see. Can you help us to navigate through the difference between vernacular and industrialized? materials with regards to environmental impact? It's a very interesting question and is uh, also a very interesting trade-off. 
With low industrialized materials like the full column bamboo, you have a lower environmental impact than an engineered bamboo product. The more process you add to a product, the higher will be the environmental impact. But when we look at the building scale, we see that there is an economy scale. And when we have larger building, multi-story buildings in engineered bamboo, at the end, the environmental impact of the building is lower than if we compare to the smaller uh, houses built with uh, round full cone bamboo. And bes beyond that, uh, what we have seen is we have a higher density of material which rebounds in a higher or a larger uh, storage capacity for biogenic CO2, which is very relevant in the current discussion. So as you can see, we unpack terms which uh, are uh, probably familiar for us researchers or uh, academics, but we really try to, to break them down for uh, an audience that first approaches the topic. Just uh, another small uh, sample, in this case from David Trujillo. Thanks a lot for the support you have given to the course as well. There are lots of tests that you can undertake to characterize bamboo species. These are now covered in ISO 22157. Uh, and if you want to work with laminated or any engineered bamboo product, we now have ISO 23478. I have prepared a small video that can show you a simple way of characterizing a bamboo. So indeed, we have also asked our, um, our collaborators from around the world to complement their teaching with videos already available within their networks and resources or uh, potentially... The first element of this setup, the first element of this setup is we have some coasters, some wheels that would give the um, bamboo element bamboo being freedom to rotate. We have an instrument that will measure deflections, an instrument that would measure loads, a means of applying a force through this ratchet, and a similar support at the other end. So this is a good example on also really how to visualize uh, science and make uh, this knowledge uh, approachable and maybe also trigger the will in some other groups to replicate these tests and replicate uh, um, the, the exercises provided. Um, I've arrived at the end of the presentation. The course is, I would say, 80% developed by now. We are really into the end of post-production phase for the videos and the writing of the exercises. It's going to be published in February 24 on EDX, the platform that I was mentioning. Um, to you earlier. You can find uh, all the information on the, um, on the website of our uh, group of ETH Zurich, Chair of Sustainable Construction. The link is at the bottom of this message, please. For any question or interest, uh, I would be happy to, to reply. And so is my colleague, Asher. Um, I think Nuno uh, and very unhappy he left the group mm -hmm. as uh, it was already intended to be like this, but really it was a uh, a key support, and it's not only him, of course, our partners from Amaco, from Imbar Innovedum, the Hiti Foundation, uh, and all the experts and the professionals who decided to invest some time in really maximize the impact uh, of teaching uh, and uh, to put into the same table and onto the same platform bamboo, timber, earth, and all solutions that we can use to, um, to enhance our habitat and reach uh, global sustainable development uh, for all. Thank you, Julia. Thank you. Thank you very much, Julia, uh, for introducing us this course. You have uh, uh, you have uh, driven us through a very interesting uh, uh, and uh, a very complete course. I think is uh, it can be very helpful uh, for all those who are uh, new or even experts on bamboo, because I see there are many many different components and also additional materials that have been included. I think is you, you guys have done a, a very good, uh, good job putting all this together. Thank you very much for sharing all this information with us. Thank you all. Thank you for the collective support we received. Thank you. 
So um, I will go with our last uh, two speakers, uh, Paola Ramirez and uh, Jenia Monroy. Uh, they have the, they are two students from the University of Panama of Architecture who have uh, founded the they are the co-founders of the collective Bamboo Lab, uh, and they will talk today uh, to us about the Bamboo Lab, the collaborative experimentation. Uh, of their creation. It's, uh, this Bamboo Lab is made up of uh, nine members who share the vision of experimenting and promoting construction with bamboo through research, specialized training and collaborations. And they uh, founded this, um, this experience after uh, participating at the different, different workshops in Panama and they were captivated by the utilization and the utilities of bamboo and they will share with us their experience on uh, developing uh, this uh, this uh, overall uh, new workshop so with us uh, i would like to introduce paola and uh, jenia um, i don't know who of them i think uh, paola you will present or jenia hi thank you i'll start talking and jenia is going to show the presentation so before starting, since we're gonna make the presentation in Spanish, we just wanna make sure everybody has already um, turned on the interpretation, please. So we're gonna start. Gracias, bienvenidos a todos. Estamos muy emocionadas. De Thank you and welcome. We're very excited to be here. My name is Paola Ramirez and I'm here with Jenny Monroy. So today we're gonna be talking about the collective we founded. It's called Bamboo Lab and it was founded in Panama. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. Thank you for listening to us. Thank you for being here. So we're going to talk a bit about how this was created. Let me tell you where we're located. We're in Panama. We have a map of the location of bamboo in the world. And uh, Panama is in this circle, located in the central part of America. So Panama is a small country. It's only 75,000 kilometers. It has 4 million people. And of course, there's the Panama Canal, which is 82 kilometers in length. So it's a country has a lot of vegetation. It's very well known for its skyscrapers and for being an international hub, as well as for international banking and trade. But we also have great biodiversity. Let's speak about the forest coverage. We have a 78% coverage in Panama. And what's interesting about this is that it is treated as a general forest. We don't have a lot of information about Panama. People are saying that I cannot see our screen. Please let us know. I can see it. Yes, I can see it too. I cannot see it. There should be an option. It says, that only the host and co-host can see the shared screen. So likely we don't have the permits at this time in order to share a screen with the rest of the group. Like, give me a second. Um, let me see. Hay una serie de presentadores que personas que no la están viendo. Sí, es expreso opción. Solo la podemos ver nosotros. Darme un momento. Okay. Um, participants training. Qinghui, are you there? Qinghui or Kewei? Yu Chen? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, Qinghui, can you share? Yeah, uh, there is some people who cannot see the screen of uh, of Genia. Can you? Uh, I think you have to give her access. Oh, ju just wait. Let's take a up. Okay, can everybody uh, see the screen? Yeah, now people see the yes. Okay. Okay. okay, now they can. 
Entonces, as I was saying, this is the map. And this uh, map of distribution of bamboo in the world. Panama is located in this circle. So we are in Central America. We're a tiny country. It's 75,000 kilometers long. There's only 4 million people living in Panama. Panama is well known for its skyscrapers, for being uh, an impacting place. So there's another face to Panama. There's biodiversity, and we feel very proud of it. There's a lot of natural wealth, and we have 68% of forest coverage. So what's interesting about this is that as part of this coverage, we treat all vegetation as the same. And so far, we don't have an inventory about what percentage of our forests are bamboo. And it's very difficult for us also to know where it's located. So when this is one of the first issues that we're facing when trying to work with bamboo and trying to work with it. So little by little, we're finding out new places where bamboo is found and where people are using bamboo. Please turn off your mics if you're not talking. I'm sorry about that. So, Panama has been a member of Envar since 2010, and there are 22 native species and nine exotic species. So, as the Bamboo Lab Collective, we're going to tell you a bit of our experience. These are faces. You'll see some new faces in the end of the presentation. But we wanted to share knowledge, experiment, and promote bamboo construction with collaboration, with research, but also with the training that is required, specialized training in this case. There's also something very important to mention. In Panama, we never had any training on construction materials as bamboo. This came from our own interest after realizing that there are other countries in Latin America where this issue is indeed spoken about. So we start with a question asking, why not in Panama? So we start making questions, we start researching and find support in the collaboration. As mentioned in previous presentations, when educating, we also obtain feedback. You may continue. All right, then. So our vision is to promote this. We want to rematerialize architecture. And as she said, we are so focused on the academia, on our free time. When we work with other people, when we share with other people, we have taken this path and we have decided to talk about biodiversity in Panama, even though it has always been there, but it hasn't been received the potential. So we haven't acknowledged where is it, who's working with it and others. So let me tell you a bit about the history. So let me explain, let us explain actually our path. We started last year in 2023. So it all started with a workshop so I have done with this. So AA from London brought us the visiting school to Panama. And Paula and I were lucky enough to obtain a scholarship for this. So let me tell you how we started with this. There was a learning opportunity given to us through which we were able to bring this message to more people. And the seed not only stayed with us, it was disseminated. So this is what we wanted to do as a collective. This is how the workshop started. This was carried out in Ciudad del Saber, the city of knowledge. It was sponsored by Ciudad del Saber. We had John Mellinger's arm. And this provided us with a lot of knowledge. The, the first classes were there. We hadn't approached the forest at the moment, but we went into the forest when we went to Valle de Mamani, we realized that the classroom was actually in nature. And being away from our day to day in order to be able to get to know about bamboo and how this material grows, we thought that this was going to be something that you were going to be able to see from a different perspective since it grows 
until you can actually use it. So this really created a deep impact, of course, beyond the experience of being able to share with other people. And we realized that the actual value was sharing with others. And this was able to bring us together. As she mentioned, we were both given scholarships. Even though we were very interested about this, sometimes this kind of information is not accessible, it's not open for everyone, and that's understandable. So because of that, we are able we were able to discover this raw material that is found in our backyard. So then we realized that this should be disseminated, it should be mainstream because people in Panama are not even aware of the possibility of building these structures and using this from an architecture perspective, going into depth in the use of this fantastic material. So something that we rescue of this is the context of construction. So being in the middle of the forest, as she mentioned, that was something very, very important for us, being able to see bamboo that was planted, see when it's cut down, when it's cured, see all the process but also how technology can be added to this, how parameters can be used to this, and tools as grasshopper could be used in order to create a better use and a broader use of bamboo. So these are some pictures of the structures that we built. We learned more about joints about the ways in which they can be used. So after this, Paula and I had a coffee and we decided, okay, what next? What to do with this information? We just had our notes written down and then we thought we can take it above and beyond and bring more students in Panama and we wanted more people to be able to experience at least a bit of what we were able to experience. So since February 22, we started thinking about this, thinking about the possibilities of making this happen, and we obtained the support of a lot of people who believed in this project, who believed in this investment, and we started a strategy that was opened in 2022. So it had three activities. First, there was an open mic. So through this, we were able to open this space for people to get to know Bamboo. So it wasn't only about Bamboo, but also about the strategies for this and about what was happening in Panama. There were also some virtual conferences where international speakers spoke, different architects, but also George Sam. And we also had the unconditional support of Rolando Sanchez, who's the director of the National Commission of Bamboo in Panama. And he opened the doors for us, for us to have experience as the one that we had experienced. We were close to the material, we were able to touch it and to see the process since it's alive until we can build with it. Our collaborations were very, very important. And one of the main people is Mia, who's here with us. And she's been one of those people who have believed in us since the beginning. Because of her, we were able to attend the first AA workshop, and there were also other co-workers who support us. The open mic, as Jenny mentioned, was a space for discussion and for criticism. It was a space where we started questioning why we are speaking about architecture in the way we are doing. So in Panama, Panama has a tropical weather, so we tend to copy some trends of countries in Europe who are not applicable to our reality, that are not useful for our context, for our weather, for the materials that we have available. So basically, our main intention was to create curiosity. It all starts with curiosity, specifically for students, for young people who are being trained in architecture. We also had the support of people that had already finished their degrees. We need to consider that this is something that is not done at a university level, at least in Panama, and we realized that these spaces were lacking, so we decided to create one. So we also have the collaboration of two different architects, and they were here collaborating with us, collaborating the open mic activity. So when we brought the students, to the farm, it was a short to the experience where we 
shared part of what we had learned in the workshop and it was very exciting. It was fantastic to be able to see how this was done and how we were able to change the routine of having classes and then just going deep into knowledge about the material. Around 20 architecture students of different years participated as well as other professionals of architecture. This was a great experience and it was very fun because as she said, we were thinking about how to replicate this, how to disseminate this knowledge and bring it to more people so more people could have this opportunity. So these were two days of hard work, specifically hers and mine, because we're part of the organization of architecture students. So we created this workshop and we had to solve a lot of logistic issues, but there was a passion behind sharing knowledge and showing people that this exists and that this can be implemented in Panama. So part of the things that we saw in this farm, the engineer who has been working in this process for over 15 years, managing and cultivating Menmu, we learned about administration of the plant, how to grow the plant, and how to do the different processes required for it. Here's Paola sharing her knowledge. We were building and to late hours of the night, we wanted to teach the rest of the students about how to use this. So these were simpler tools where we could have simple contacts. So we spent the night here. We had a fire pit, there was music, and we were speaking about how bamboo can bring us together. And this is our model workshop. These are the model that taught us how to make with this, this, this in real scale. And because of this, many of the principles of Bamboo Lab were created. And we realized that not only people were encouraged, but they were also motivated. And one of the main pillars of what we do in Bamboo Lab is the community, how to create a community, how to create curiosity, how to go out and break this pre-built paradigms and be open to new possibilities, how to create something out of nothing. This was a fantastic workshop. Many things were improvised because we didn't have all the tools at hand, but everyone was committed. They brought their lamps and they continued building because everyone was excited. And after this, we said, okay, so how can we continue being involved with this? So in 2022, we had the intention of creating a project. Go ahead. So we started meeting informally and we start with the pillars of Bamboo Lab. So people after this workshop asked us what to do and we didn't know, we, we never thought we'd get this far, but because of their interest, we started getting together, we started putting together proposals and with the support of people that had more experience as uh, her in this case. So. We also started participating in International Day of Bamboo. We did this with Rolando. So we learned more about this community that was speaking about bamboo. We were working with institutions. There were different institutions and ministries that were involved and we tried to get them involved and show them what was happening in Panama. And in September 2026, we created Bamboo Lab. This is made up of nine members, Paola, myself, we have Tina, Janet, Alison, Seria, and others. We are the ones currently active, actively promoting what we can do and what can be made here in Panama. So the official members of Bamboo Lab are the two of us, but we also have Celia. She was a professional before. And because of the Bamboo Construye, she decided to make her master's degree thesis about construction. We have other boys, as uh, David and Fermin, they participated in a workshop in Colombia. And they saw Bamboo closer in Colombia, so they realized that we were creating this. They said that they wanted to be a part of this, and they didn't realize that we had such a thing in Panama. 
So in 2023, there was a series of projects and good opportunities for learning for all of us without realizing this happened. So we start with Rodaisa, and as we said before, this engineer has been one of our main pillars. Because of him, we've been able to explore this. So we started putting together proposals for a training space, for a professional training space. You can continue if you want. So yeah, as I said, we started looking for people, we started analyzing places, we started bringing together proposals for architecture in order to create this intention and to submit it to organizations who could help us with resources and rescue this structure because there is an existing damaged structure because of time so it wasn't properly protected. So on this existing structure, we started putting together proposals in order to be able to have this on our side if we have the chance of making it material. So these are some images. These were some side visits. There was a lot of research. So there were a lot of things taken into consideration for it. During this time, we also had the opportunity of participating in the seminar from the industry of bamboo and the green economy for developed countries in China. This was in July 2023. This was because of the Ministry of Trade of China and with the support of the National Commission, the course was provided by the CVRC and it was a fantastic opportunity. We had the chance of meeting a lot of people from other countries, actually from 33 countries. Well, actually 12 countries, but 33 participants. There were four people representing Latin America, including us. And this is space where we were able to share what is being done in each place and understanding that we all had a common objective related to bamboo and thinking that there were practices we could learn from one and from one another. What we learned about China was a fantastic experience and it was very exciting for us to do this. So these are some of the farms we have visited. These are the readings, the professors. So this is a cultural exchange, but we also had the chance of getting to know about the development of bamboo in China and learning how the architecture, we were in shock about the use of bamboo. There is more technique than we are used to seeing and we can see how each piece of bamboo is taken advantage of. And there's also a perspective for Panama. We thought about how can we bring this to our country and use it in our context, our weather, our needs, and see how it could also help improve our economy. How culturally bamboo was present, how all products are manufactured from bamboo, from laminated bamboo, and also the cultural experience. Some of the people that were there are here too. Thank you for being with us. And we were able to speak about bamboo in Panama. We spoke about our perspectives and we also spoke about what is being done in other countries. So it was certainly a very interesting experience for us that makes us think about the future of bamboo in our country. So as Paola mentioned before, Celia Cedeño, who was our classmate and she attended the course too, she attended the seminar and she did her thesis about uh, Self sustainable construction guide in bamboo based on one of the experiences she had based on the knowledge that she learned at the farm. So this is her master's thesis. So about myself, I'm currently working on my undergrad thesis. It's a center in the province of Chiriqui regarding bamboo. And we've analyzed these experiences So there are different perspectives and different areas where bamboo is found and we create an inventory. We found 19 species. We've seen this species. So I've asked a lot of questions and I've learned a lot and I've tried to learn how to recognize these species and see what's the potential that they have and how 
bamboo is already being used. We're not imposing bamboo. Bamboo is already being used, so we're just trying to find ways to make the process easier, and we're trying to teach people that other things can also be made out of bamboo. We also have the chance to participate in the Summit Park. It has 10 bamboo species, and we participated together with children. So we did this on World Bamboo Day, so we taught them what the material is like. So we built some things like kites. One of the kids approached us and this kid had seen bamboo and videos on his tablet. So he wanted to touch bamboo to feel how it felt. So we taught him that it's not a straw. It has not as strong as resistant. And also the parents were interested and we brought some brochures from the seminar and we taught them what structures can be made out of bamboo. Not the things that we are only used to, but other things that go beyond. So now the project we're currently working on, we've been working on this for a few months and we've done so in collaboration with different societies and associations. So Mia is one of the characters who's always there, who's always supporting us. So this is the first festival of architecture and design of Panama and Bamboo Lab was invited to be part of it. So we start with the open mic. We are of course focused on Bamboo. Our space is called Pabellón. And there is a series of activities that have taken place. So first the open mic, then the workshops, we're gonna be speaking about this. And in January, 2024, we're going to carry out this major festival. We're going to be able to see all these processes for the open mic. One of the main objectives was involving people, not only of the architecture world, but also involve civil engineers and other kind of professionals in order to create comprehensive communication. Next. And as I said before, this festival is open for everyone who wants to participate. You can log on to that web page and you'll be able to see all the events. So not only bamboo is targeted, but also other things, architecture, their shows. And what we see here is part of our experiences and the workshops that we are showing as Bamboo Lab in Pabellón workshops, as you can clearly see. Next. Of course, so we're working on this. This was our first experience in October. So we went to the jungle because we believe it's very important to connect from nature before taking it back to the city. After that, well, actually during this week, we're gonna start with a workshop with a very well-known architect from Panama. And we have an architecture perspective related to bamboo. So through this, we're going to be able to create resources that can be shown when creating this space. So after this, we have parametric design with John May, and he's going to support us in a training course about parametric architecture so that people will be able to understand how to include technology for this amazing material. And we're going to conclude with the creation of a pavilion with the collaboration of George Sam, they are going to take place in January. Anyone who can and is able to participate can participate. You can log on to this web page and you're good to go. So because of all these experiences, we already held one in the Mamoni Valley. We went back to Mamoni and we wanted to learn more about what the process is like there. When we talk about bamboo, when we work with bamboo, there are different perspectives shown. There are different ways of managing and different purposes for it. So we work in the agroforestry center where we try to learn the procedure from immunization, the technique that is used. We use these that is made out of PVC and it uses this rubber. And the objective of this, when we ask why this kind of process was used, unlike other systems that we had seen before, is that the community needs to have access to the immunization means and learn about this, learn that they can just use a machete and immunize 
the process, the plant, and this is how it's done. So the students have the opportunity of cutting the material, of immunizing it, seeing how it dries, how it is drilled. And also in the Mamoni Reserve, they're currently building a pavilion. So as of now, bamboo has grown for eight years and now it finally has the proper diameter for it to be used in construction and thus the beams are being manufactured in this area and it's going to be taken to the construction of a dining hall in charge of a collective group that we met on the way and they have also taught us a lot so we learned about how they laminate bamboo how it's stick is treated, the diameters, how this is stuck together, how to drill. Paula and I have never had the chance to see this before. So perhaps we're not experts in this. I don't feel as if we're experts, but together and going above and beyond, we are able to learn from others and also learn while we have this experience of getting involved with more people. This is the experience that has allowed us to grow. Let me tell you about the importance of the community. How we bring more people, how we connect. We don't have all the answers, so we need to find platforms that have the answer. So that's the question that comes next. So we're currently working a lot and we are asking a lot of questions. We're thinking about how to continue being involved with communities and working with people who are not only from architecture. I think there was a question there. There's no regulations in Panama for bamboo. Bamboo is basically not known of in bamboo. So we have a database about bamboo, about who uses bamboo, who works with bamboo, because we don't have formal information about this. And often there are people who have their own proper interests, but as there's no formal network in Panama, we don't know who to work with. So I think that's all from our side. Thank you very much. Thank you for this space. Thank you, John, for giving us this opportunity as well. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paola, and thank you, Genia. Would you like to say something else or should we go directly into the Q&A session? Before the Q&A, I would like to thank them and acknowledge their energy as well as the way in which they're working. This is fantastic. And yeah, this is what we are promoting from Ember. Trainers of potential trainers. So. You are trainers of potential future trainers. This is a very important link. People like you are very, very important. In just two years of work, I can see that you've learned a lot. This is amazing. I would like to congratulate you. And now I'd like to give the floor to David to continue with the Q&A session. And this are meant for all participants. Is David gone? David, are you there? Let's wait a second. It's me, I'm back. I had some technical problems. Okay, let us continue with the questions. There's always problems with technology, as you know. So, I was taking a look at the questions as they pop up. So, there have been some talks in the chat. So, first of all, on my behalf, I would like to congratulate all the speakers. Your work has been fantastic. So, here we have a question for Jan. Jan, are you still here with us? Yes, I'm here. I'm here. So, engineering partnerships with industries that are using bamboo and other biofibers for different verticals other than just construction of villas, furniture, and tourism. Eh, ¿Te lo traduzco? No, 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 no. gracias. Uh, no, de, de, efectivamente es importante... No, de, no, you don't need to translate. 
it is important to point out that Latin America in general, not only Peru, still has a major gap. So Peruvian universities in general are very interested in this kind of technology transfer because, listen, I always defend the use of bamboo and I'm fully convinced the transformation and boo is very important for the market. We cannot simply use bamboo in the way that it has always been used. We need to learn about experiences in Asia and in North America. So yes, I'm very, very happy about the use of it. And I think all universities are interested in this. I have another question for you. This was asked by Jorge Enrique Franco. It's about the structures. This is about the structural calculations for the structures. When is this made? No, no, we never make calculations. No, 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 I'm just joking. I'm just joking. No, no, that's not the case. OK, I'm going to be completely honest. When we build very light structures, we don't always use the structural calculations because we we have our own experience. We know how it works. We know how much it can withstand, okay? However, when we are creating bigger projects, then the structural calculations are made. Of course, we follow the Peruvian standard and whenever we're lacking Peruvian standards, we use the Colombian standards, which are a little bit more comprehensive. So we do this when we design, and it's very important for us. We believe that architects should have the foundations, the structural foundations, in order to avoid problems with engineers. Because modernizing a bamboo structure can be difficult, certainly. So whenever you bring this to the engineer, it should be of the right thickness. And we can understand how it works. We understand what joints are. And we need to fill this with concrete. And maybe it will require reinforcement. So for us, the idea is that this should be done before the project, before the architecture project. And after this, we should be able, because of the feedback received, start placing the necessary reinforcement whenever needed, wherever needed, without the need of changing the structural concept of this. That's, that's why models are good tools. If we use a one to 10 scale, allow us to, as architects realize if stability has been resolved or not. All right, thank you so much. Now, let's talk to the next person. Here we have a question for Paola and Genia. If you want to foster the production and construction of bamboo, where to start? Based on your experience, what would you recommend? Education, education will be first. Education should be first. All right. David, let me take advantage of this moment to congratulate Paola and Genia. I feel identified with your story. When I started, as I said, I didn't know anything. And workshops as this, these intensive workshops where we can see transversely, of course, the presence of a professor is key because there are professors who are able to plant a seed to create interest. So there are two professors that are good and that share this passion. If they share the passion, it doesn't matter how clear the information is, how much technique you have at hand, you've already created interest. And now, these two girls are promoters by themselves. 
And I think, yeah, that this is the question. Bring the passion. And then everyone will listen from their own experience, from their needs, and from their career perspective. Thanks. Thank you for your answer. I wanted to take advantage of this moment. There is a question about Julia. And it was because of your question about education. Julia. Yeah, we can yeah, even excellent. continue in Spanish if it's easier for the translator not to uh, skip that. Yeah. Effort. Okay, I'll, I'll stick to Spanish. Entonces, Julia. So I'll continue Spanish. So, based on Paola's answer, the, saying that education is key, you're creating the resource that you spoke about. So, I have a question for you about the MOOC. So, when will the MOOC be launched? I think you said it February, February, okay. Have you thought about a strategy to reach professors, for example, people in the University of Panama who could take advantage of this resource? So this is a marketing structure even though it's free but how can you make this resource available for more people how can you make sure that this will reach all the planet so we're trying to maximize the impact of the curse and we try to globalize knowledge so we want to use that contact that we have in eth we have uh well there's a department called eth for development that has some very good contacts in general in developing countries, but that's not the only interest of this training course. The reason why I'm trying to connect with you in Habitat is specifically this, trying to find how other channels can foster this network, maximize it. We have the support of NBAR. <laughs> well, <laughs> this should be the moment to speak about them, right? <laughs> so, yeah, certainly. There have been many contributions of people from different countries, and we have seen a skate effect. So each one of the guest speakers should help us disseminate our course. There is a student who has worked in our department, so it's not a lot of people, but if we join all these efforts and participating in events, and presenting it to the world of a farm, we'll be able to see the size of the intervention. But yes, dissemination is crucial. Otherwise, this is going to be a one-off that will just stop when okay. it happens. Okay. There are many questions, but there's something that I'd like to ask the three of you. I believe in one specific characteristic of bamboo. So far, we've spoken about teaching the use of bamboo because bamboo is a resource that we should use. But let me ask you a different question. It has been on my mind for a while. Bamboo as an education vehicle. So I would like to know what are the possibilities of Bamboo as a vehicle for profit. Let's start with Jan, because you're a professor who has been teaching this for years. Do you see in Bamboo something that teaches architecture students? Something that, that teaches them something different than being just a material? Then we're going to listen to Julia and then Paola and Jenny. Oh, right. Thank you so much for your question, David. This is an issue that I haven't spoken about before, but certainly bamboo is a tool. And it should go beyond teaching the use of bamboo. And it can be used in different spheres. So, of course, architecture, but it is also a material that allows me to take students out of the classroom from every perspective. Well, there are many places of the world where bamboo is present, but here we use different materials. We use concrete and 
students are building boxes and boxes and boxes. That's the only thing they're building. So this is very reductionist from that perspective. And Bamboo allows them to explore a different method. Paola spoke about this. I've also spoken about this. So it allows us to go into parametric designs, other geometries. So be able to understand a different perspective of a structure. So for me, this means that it is a vehicle that helps us provide more information. We could also be doing this with steel, with wood, but bamboo has a great advantage because through bamboo, we can also address the carbon footprint and the challenges related to sustainability that are required in the construction sector. So there are many areas that I can bring together and have the same approach. And then through this video game, which is meant for children, children between five and 10, we have also realized that bamboo is something that could be mainstreamed in its use. And we can speak about the environment, we can speak about culture, we can speak about identity. And certainly because of this, we've realized that we need to get out of our comfort zone. I have to do this as a professor, but it has been wonderful. We have been able to speak about bamboo as something that helps us bring information to new generations because we're facing the challenge of climate change. We need to think about the importance of renewable resources. I will finish here. Thank you very much. We don't have any more time left in our conference. So Julia, what can you say about this? Do you think that bamboo plays a role in the process of education beyond just teaching? Yes, of course. I think that he already explained most of it, but I think that bamboo helps us see directly what's the connection between construction and the environment. And it's such a simple material that can be related to any culture. So we can open the conversation to everyone, not only those who are part of this, but everyone who lives and walks through our cities. So I'm happy to see that kids were included in activities too. Certainly. Paola and Genia. What do you think? What have you learned as architects with bamboo? So beyond considering bamboo a construction material, we should see this as a plant, see how it grows, see how diverse it may be. And when seeing this distribution map, based on my perspective, we can see that there may be different uses and different ways in which it grows. So it's not just standardized beams as with steel and there's no rods as with steel, each one grows differently. And I like to use an analogy of humanity and bamboo and the way in which we're so diverse, so unique, and we can move and grow towards the light and find something in common find our roots. So we get a little bit philosophical when talking about bamboo because it's life, but it can also be a natural toolbox for us. I heard someone say this once. So involving children and going a little bit beyond specifically in regards to this activity about painting bamboo. So we said, okay, kids are going to paint bamboo. We're going to use brown and green colors, and we thought that we wanted to bring more colors beyond these two. And when we were there, we realized that the plants were there at the Summit Park. So there's a bamboo trail, there's a lot of species, but we also wanted some pieces of bamboo to allow children to play with them. So they will no longer believe that bamboo should always be green or brown. They are realizing that it's not completely green, that it has 
of their colors and that it's not equal, it's not perfect, it's not a cylinder, it's not a cone, it's diverse, it's unique, it's called as different. So beyond seeing the material, I think the plan and everything it can teach you since you're a small kid and you see this in your art until you have contact with it and you realize that there's things inside of it. Well, we're also children whenever we see a bamboo rod and we see everything that can be done with it. So I think that this learning, learning about this and learning of bamboo as a plant yeah, helps us as humanity and it goes beyond the benefits that we are all aware of now. Thank you very much. Paula, would you like to add something? I saw you saying something on the chat. I'm just answering questions. We're a team, she's answering. So, if you want, you can um, ask questions on the chat and we can have the communication all work because we're out of time. Okay, so Julia, Jenny, and Paola, thank you very, very much, as well as Jen. Thank you for being with us. There's another question. Someone raised their hands, but unfortunately, we're all out of time. So thank you very much, everybody, for attending this workshop. Thank you for being part of today's talk. This has certainly been inspiring. These are some very interesting exercises from an educational perspective. There are a lot of projects. You are not only speaking about things that have been made, but also about your ambitions, your desires of creating new projects. And I would like to congratulate you all because you are doing some fantastic work. I wanted to take a look at this for a while because I'm a professor myself and I'm passionate about the possibilities that Bamboo offers as an educational resource, of course, beyond learning itself about Bamboo. So thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Borja, would you like to add something? No, David. Just would like to thank everybody. So, as it has been pointed out today, it's been a pleasure to share this space with you, to learn from you, and also to see the fantastic energy of the new experiences that each one of you is bringing to the table about Bamboo. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Gracias. Cheers. Thanks. Bye. Gracias, gracias. Muchas gracias.